least starting to get a few remote people in. Okay. In order to accommodate the crowd in the room, you guys, oh yeah, you guys can still see it. Uh, I'm just going to give us a minute or two more. So we'll start in a minute or two. Obviously being facetious. Is anybody else having a really quiet audio? Do you, is this better? Do you want me to get closer to the mic when I speak? Oh, yeah, that's, that's quite a bit better. One um, music? Yeah. Music. Music would be nice. Oh, uh, that's a, I'll have to take that under advisement. Let's figure out if I can do that for, for next time. Uh, figure out how to get music playing for the while we wait. Oh, I thought you were going to sing. Okay. Trust me, you do not want that. <laughs> I'm going to go on mute because I'm going to make some coffee here. Hey, Chris, can you hear me? I can. Coming through clear. Okay, thanks. How's, uh, how's the rules <laughs> of Western Pennsylvania treating you? Oh, man. It's kind of light out, but early. <laughs> um, so... All right, I think I'm all set here. All right, I don't know if we're going to get much more, so we're just going to kick this sucker off. This is, in fact, NFS v4. Welcome. Scan the code. Increase our numbers by a significant percentage. All right, note well. Uh, you may not have actually seen this, especially with our uh, with our remote folks. So I'll leave that up there for a second. And I already have somebody in queue, which they've changed the interface for me. Did you do that? Do you want out? Go ahead. Uh, this seems a quite small crowd. Uh in this working group, um, so I would appreciate uh, for newer people to uh, mention your affiliation and uh, name in the beginning of speaking. Thank you. Uh, I think we can manage that. I already lost one of my contributors in the room, but I got him on the blue sheet, so it's OK. Uh, note really well. So this is the uh, other part of behavior for IETF. Um, be nice to people. I think that that summarizes it. If you have any questions, reach out to one of your chairs or ADs. Uh, if you feel like you've been harassed, you can go talk to the ombuds people. And they tell me to put this slide in, but I'm hoping that everybody's figured this out already. OK. So welcome, chairs. We're, we're working on that. I'm going to go through kind of the document update and in, uh, kind of a where we are with engagement uh, and some bake -a That's all in these chair slides. Um, any bashes? Does anybody want to uh, inject anything into the agenda? Going once. Going twice. OK, moving on. All right, document status. So uh, this is kind of where we're at. We pushed two documents into uh, up for publication. One is at IESG. You can see that uh, as the top one. It's now been scheduled for the end of the month. Um, we have. Uh, 
um, Delst did, which is also pushed out of working group. It's waiting for updates from the authors. And then I also have layout and working group last call. Um, I really need more reviews on lists so I can move it out of the working group. So I would really appreciate if anybody can take, it's a shockingly short document, please take the 15 minutes or, you know, what have you to, to read that document and, and give a, uh, you know, a thumbs up, thumbs down on the list so that I can close the working group last call on it and, and move it forward. Or at least we can send it back to the authors for any updates if they're needed. Um, and then we have some others. So uh, the I'm, the I'm sorry, Chris. Which which short document did you ask for comments on? On um, layout WCC. Layout, got it. Oh, needs reviews on list. I see. Yes. yes. Sorry, you got ahead of me. I was looking at something else. No worries. If I can get a review out of it, I'll take that comment anytime. Um, I would say some of the folks uh, have been a little bit uh, preoccupied or busy with their day job. So we have uh, stuff for uh, the, um, I'm expecting some updates to happen kind of uh, after November or as we go forward uh, in the, early or late in this year or early in the new year. Okay, okay. chair status. Um, we are managing to move some things through to publication. Um, we did not manage to schedule the promised interim and that was mostly this chair's fault, I will say. Um, we're probably not putting enough pressure on participants for some updates or getting the feedback we need to do that. What are the chairs not managing to do to get the engagement of the working group? And is would we say, hey, this is the chairs not managing to um, push things along? Or is there does the working group feel that the chairs are doing enough, not enough, too much? Uh, give us feedback on this. Uh, we, we're, we're um, I mean, we, we have some documents kind of in late stage, but we're not moving them uh, in any noticeable fashion. Uh, and we have some documents that we've kind of agreed to adopt, but we're, we're stuck on, on, you know, kind of getting the updates and moving those into the process. Um, I will note, and, and I'll, this, previewing the next slide, uh, talking about some work that happens maybe outside of kind of the IETF list and, and what have you. So, you know, um, this is your chance to tell the chairs, uh, you know, what do you guys need for us to be more effective for you? And you, if you don't want to say it, you know, here and now, you can put it on list for sure, uh, or you can, you know, tell our friendly AD, um, you know, what 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 the issues are, if there are issues. Do we need to raise our hands? Oh, I'm sorry. There's somebody approaching the mic. I'll I'll get in line. You know, they updated the the chair queue management in Meet Echo, and I'm not super good about how to uh, manage it at this point. So uh, Tom, go ahead. Oh, OK. Um, I, I think the chairs are doing a fine job, although I'll, I'll say that things seem to go dead from time to time. And I just might suggest that the chairs could use some of those quiet moments to push people. I, I'm, I'm guilty of not being able to produce much in the last two months. And I'm hoping to come out of hibernation here in November. Actually, I'm, I'm promising to. Um, I have a draft that is not yet a work group uh, document because I haven't actually produced the document. We discussed it uh, previously. Um, and, you know, a little, a little nudge and a little reminder will help. But regular messages to the work group list that aren't just you know, here's a new draft that's been published from the automated robots uh, 
it might just help. Other than okay. that, I think the chairs are doing fine. Personally. Uh, can I uh, ask that you also state affiliation for... for oh. uh, I have no affiliation. I'm an independent uh, protocol architect slash software developer. Uh, I actually, yes. Thank you. I, I'm just trying to get everybody to do it so that we- Sure, sorry. We, we suck in the new people and we actually keep them. Go ahead, sir. So, so uh, this is Jahed. I'm your friendly lady, as uh, <laughs> Chris was saying. Uh, yeah, so, so um, I'm just, going to put my thinking what's happening here and uh, like my suggestions so like the question that you are asking like i think um obviously we have like a small working group very small participant list and only like today you can see like a like, number of people here only so i'm not i'm not expecting a lot of serious discussion happening but i'm at least expecting some discussion some reviews happening um so what i would suggest like um the chairs to be a bit pushy on like as you said like there are a number of documents and instead like nothing happening like i have done my ad review on one one of the document right um, and I, I have not got any response on that one so it, i think the chairs could actually should go and talk with all of the um, authors of the different drafts and try to ask for a time plan i know everybody is pretty busy but having a time plan and putting in somewhere uh, you have this um, working group wiki or something that would help you and me to understand how things are progressing. So that that would be things. And there, so I, I know like you guys have the chairs of like weekly meetings. So you can schedule like inviting some of the authors to actually talk with them, not just talk with within yourself, but talk with the authors. Uh, so they're like, hey, you, you are sitting on it for a long time and we need to move on, uh, those kind of things. So that would be my suggestion part. And I also think like there are other things here. So we had this hackathon news happening. I think some of like all of you were there. And you, you say like a lot of, uh, in, uh, yeah, okay. They, then there you have it. But uh, so I would like to get those experiences that the, the missing parts or like the, the, oh, this is, this is not done, done right in the specification to come to this mailing list. Uh, this is not about only like a particular document talk. This is about like, hey, we we have been implementing. This is this is the this is basically our experience from the hackathon or backathon, uh, and these are the issues we we listed. So at least that will infuse some sort of like, uh, what do you call it, um, um, thinking to our participants. Like, oh, we have something to actually do, because if you just do this kind of backathon and just forget about and fix it, hack it. Uh, through and not not really reflect on your standards, that would be a problematic thing. So, you have a slide. So you want to say something about it? I guess. Well, uh, so just that you brought up uh, uh, hackathon and 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 the well, bakeathon, and yet yeah, there is uh, uh, from a chair's seat. Um, I I agree with we have work that happens outside of IETF that do, that uh, the chairs go and try to do extraction of those events and bring it back to IETF, um, which it would be ideal if if uh, there was, and, and, and full disclosure here, the chairs do it before the meetings. So that's probably not the right time for the chairs to necessarily do it. Maybe we should do it a little more proactively. But that said, uh, the community is somewhat more involved and we don't see it on the mailing list or obviously at the meetings. Uh, you know, showing up in person or necessarily even virtually. Yeah, I mean that's that's basically where I was thinking. Like, if you guys chairs or like some of the some of the responsible on the Bekaton, like like Chuck or somebody else, like Tom, I don't like who, I don't know who was there otherwise. But but if 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 you have participants there, and maybe we can assign some some kind of short summary of like what's the findings and what's the impact on this on our standards so if the if you say like rpc with tls and implementation in march that's really not good news but did you did it went like smooth or do we see like okay here we have missed some part that needs some some sort of like updates or whatever so i think those things should come this this is a small community and they should they are happy to talk with each other but uh, 
if we care about the standards, then it should come to the mailing list. It should come to the meeting. I would like, I would even say like, let's have, if this kind of happens, let's have a presentation on these things in, uh, in our sessions uh, so that we actually really go and talk. Yeah. Uh, this chair agrees. Uh, Tom, in your queue. Yeah, um, so um, it, it, that it's good input. Um, when you say hackathon, are you referring to the IETF hackathon? Because that's, uh, I don't even know what, what that is, but I'll give a report on the local event that I think you're referring to, the Bakeathon. Yeah, the Bakeathon. The Bakeathon, yes. I think I, I used the generalist term here, but sorry about that one. But I was really oh, okay. thinking about the, the one that went to the list. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was hoping like we can actually get some summary in the meetings, so uh, or in the. Well, in yeah, I, I'm just looking at the names of the participants. I don't know if there's anybody hiding in the corner of the room. I, it looks like I'm the only person who uh, was at that bakeathon, but I can give a quick, a quick summary from my yeah. perspective. Yeah, that'd be great. But would appreciate that. This yeah. is this is your moment to shine, Tom. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Wait, uh, this is BP, um, Brian Plowski from Quantum. Um, <laughs> just want to be kind of clear on something here, uh, not for Tom and Dave, uh, but for everybody else. So th the bakeathons have been going on since the dawn of time, but they are specifically not associated with the IETF and don't follow ITF guidelines for anything, right? Yeah. They're lightweight events for NFS developers to get together, catch as catch can with their you know, implementations to test. So we've previously shied away from um, any kind of official interaction with the Bakeathons from an IETF perspective. In the working group, uh, it, it, that's we we know it happens, but we've never formalized it anyway within the group. Um, I, I I Brian Pulaski have no objection whatsoever to talking about it, but I want to be crystal clear that this is not an IETF led event. So don't... yeah, Brian. I mean that's clear to me, and this this doesn't need okay. to be. I mean this doesn't need to be an IETF thing. But what I'm yeah. saying, like, we get some, uh, I mean, when you were hack hacking, like in the IETF hackathon, we have been hacking on a multipath quick and we have the issues. And then we mm -hmm. go to the quick working ones to resolve those issues. That's, but this doesn't need to be an IETF hackathon or, or like uh, IETF related activity. This could be anywhere. You, because this backathon is basically, as you said, like, it has been there for from the dawn of this kind of technology. It's very effective, it's very uh, appealing mm -hmm. and involving. And if you can get those experience into the into this um, like uh, uh, working group or mailing list in some way or another, then you get more kind of engagement from this working group as well. Like because these are the same participants, I would say. Like Tom was there, I think you guys were there. Like these are the same participants. So you don't need to be officially tied the backathon with this uh, NFSB, but I think it could getting the information in a NFSB working group would actually infuse some new blood or infuse some new kind of thinking to how to solve the problem and making so, this work more engaging that's what i uh, okay i just want i just want to make sure that for the record um it's entry to the bakeathon is not for everyone entry to bakeathon is yeah. i have an implementation in hand and i'm going to test it and it's, it's not a uh it's not a popcorn event with people watching right mm -hmm. so it's yeah. it's all okay. about it's all about testing and and it was so I, I I'll just rewind a little I I completely echo BP's comment and that's yeah. that's what the intention of all the participants is they're there to test physically test their implementations um, so the one uh, in um, October it was held just a couple three or four weeks ago I don't know it was early mid October um, it was. Uh, held in Westford, Massachusetts in a Red Hat facility. It's been held there several times, many times before. Um, it's uh, basically put on by Red Hat. Steve Dixon, who uh, I'm opposed to the list, uh, 
um, uh, organized it and a number of Red Hat uh, engineers helped create a little test network. There were probably about 12 or so attendees, about half of them were remote, half of them were local. Um, uh, the uh, remote was uh, facilitated by a VPN, which actually worked pretty well, I, best I could tell. I didn't need to use it, but they did, and, uh, and it worked well. Um, it was primarily testing, you know, it was like, we're not trying to push the boundaries of the protocol, we're trying to test the implementations. That's, that's what the attitude of the event was. Although there were some really interesting discussions and, and um, you know, one of them came to the list that those messages that Rick Macklem sent about directory delegation and questions about how they should behave recalling directory delegations. That was out of that discussion. Rick gave a presentation and we all encouraged him to raise it on the list. We all agreed with his question that it, that it wasn't something that any single person could just answer, that spec didn't really say it clearly enough. And so, you know, we, that message was one of those messages. It didn't represent the Bakathon, it just represented Rick Macklem. But, you know, that's, that's what it was. And it, I thought it was, it was a very productive discussion. We had a good time. Um, the, the other things, there were a couple of others. Um, Jeff Layton, who's a Red Hat uh, developer, has been working on timestamping to facilitate NFS in the Linux kernel. Timestamping of files is a little awkward. It happens at, at odd intervals, unpredictable intervals, depending on the file system. And it causes uh, cached um, uh, attributes to be invalidated because the timestamp changes in a nonlinear, unexpected fashion sometimes. And so he had quite an interesting discussion about that. It's really not an NFS protocol question, although the NFS protocol could adapt to do something about it, I suppose. Nobody really wants to do that. Um, and uh, he made a pretty deep dive on it, and that effort still is making a deep dive. He's getting a lot of pushback from Linux about how difficult it is to uh, implement uniformly over the hundreds of file systems that are in Linux. And so um, that's kind of a meta question from a protocol's perspective, but I thought it was a very interesting discussion and I support Jeff in his efforts to, uh, to at least, I don't know, level the playing field, clarify the, the horizon, do, do something to make it more predictable and more useful to uh, protocol implementers. And personally, I was there to test RDMA. I actually tested SMB as well as NFS over various uh, RDMA uh, uh, implementations. Um, the, uh, the NFS worked pretty smoothly. The SMB was uh, at a couple of, uh, of um, not so much protocol issues, but interoperability issues regarding uh, port selection and things like that. It was an implementation question rather than a protocol question once again. Thanks, Dave. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, a couple of these items that that, that are on the list or uh, on the on the slide or or the Tom mentioned uh, might be relevant to RFC fifty six sixty one bis down the way. Certainly, those related to uh, to directory delegation. Uh, I have some other work planned for directory delegation. In the not 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 immediately, but there will be some changes to that, and I will discuss with Rick his issues. And the other one regarding timestamps, I haven't seen, but I'd like to have some discussion of that on the list. So let's see if there's anything there to go into and that might relate to. Uh, well, it's Chris. a it's a Linux it's a Linux discussion. Um, it's Does it have any hard... implications for uh, for the protocol? Uh, the so goal is not not to create any implications for the protocol. Um, okay, but Fair enough. Um, uh, well, you mentioned not something not being clear. Maybe if 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 if, if there's some clarity, that could be. In well, the no, the clarity was was in the uh, recall of a directory delegation. Right? Okay, um, all right. Rick all right. wasn't, well, that's, that's Rick wasn't sure whether a directory could receive a delegation because of the way the text was written, for instance. Um, okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll follow up with Rick on those. Yeah, the timestamping 
the time stamping is different. It's pretty much about NFSV3, by the way. Um, you know, NFSV4 has a more uh, um, easily uh, determined state yes. for a uh, for a attribute. Okay, so the NFSV3 is related to uh, the so-called flexible files thing, where the typical mode is that the data the data transfer pro protocol is NFSV3. So I think that would be. I'd like to discuss that with uh, with with Tom Haynes as well. If, if, if he is any yeah, okay. Um, flexible file. Uh, yeah, NFSV3 with a flexible file usually has a PNFS slash NFSV4 metadata yeah. relationship. That's so right. the timestamps the timestamps are coming via NFSV4 and have a different behavior. The timestamps of the of the flex files are a slightly different aspect. Linux is still trying hard to support NFSV3. They have a lot of users of it and people expect it to work. And it winds up invalidating its cache all the time because the timestamps have jitter in them. And it drives them crazy. So Rick, uh, not Rick, um, Jeff is trying to uh, correct the behavior of timestamps, which is actually slightly broken in Linux, by the way. And um, uh, in order to improve NFS, he argues it'll improve other file systems too, which it will, but there's a ton of pushback. So as a, this Chris Anasio, as a chair, is that something that's potentially worthy of some kind of implementation note, you know, an informational write-up or, and I get, Tom, I, I understand, I, I heard you loud and clear, it, it's a Linux issue. Um, and so the answer could easily be, no, it's not, uh, but it, you know, curiosity. There is so much tribal knowledge in NFS v3, you could, you could write an implementation note for the next hundred years. And, you know, but before all the developers die off and aren't there to write it anymore, um, you know, I, I don't think that's a, that's a fruitful uh, pursuit personally. Um, it, it sounds good, but it, it's just, I don't know. There's just too much other baggage out there. Now, okay. one could consider it, if if you if you narrow the scope really tightly and say we're only going to talk about timestamps, um, then maybe yeah. I just, I mean that was the whole point of Connectathon years ago. There there really wasn't a spec for many years, right? It was just kind of creep, crept out of Sun into other companies, and the other companies figured some things out, and they didn't quite interoperate, so everybody got in a room and. It, you know, it was like tribal knowledge. And as a chair, also, Dave, can you state your affiliation? Oh, um, I'm I'm work for NetApp. Thanks. I I feel like we've kind of covered this other topics, Bakethon, and I feel like there's some other things that out of this conversation we should initiate a conversation and do some follow up on the list. Um, so, uh, uh, Brian, hopefully you're, you're making a, a few notes if you haven't fallen asleep because of the hour that you're dialing in at. If not, we'll play back the transcript and uh, we'll get something out on the list to kind of follow up on some of this. Uh, I, am, I am taking minutes uh, furiously. <laughs> and, I will, and I'm also noting in my minutes to look at the transcript to get some detail out of that. <laughs> OK. I'll, I'll just say one more thing about Bakathon. All the participants in Bakathon are well familiar with the IETF and think about it all the time. And, you know, we're sitting around the room and saying, you know, we really ought to take this to the IETF list and things like that. There's, there's quite a bit of, uh, of, you know, participation and thought about where some, when something rises to the level of requiring a protocol type discussion, IETF context. So it's not like it's hiding. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of self-filtering in a way sometimes. It's still maturing in the, in the vat till it's ready. Well, sort of. It's just it, these are, they're not answering protocol questions, right? They, they've already agreed on the protocol. The IETF has brought them together on the protocol. Honestly, I'm, I'm serious about this. Everybody 
has it at the front of their mind. Is this a protocol question? And if it is, they 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 don't stop talking about it in the big thought, obviously, but they realize they can't decide it there. Okay, this is uh, really going to be kind of eating up the rest of this meeting. And Dave, I opened up the deck, but you're welcome to. I can close it okay. out. You can open it, or you can tell me to you know move forward slides. Or well, yeah, okay, that's, if, you, if you can do that. Okay, all right. So uh, uh, again, I'm Dave Novick. I work for NetApp, and I've been working on the uh, four documents that are dis discussed here as part of Net effort to do abyss to update 5661 and 88, 80, actually 8881 is it will be updated. Let's go on to the next slide. Well, uh, I also had issues with my day job and other things and work has been proceeding, but not as, as quickly as I expected because it was more work than I expect to coordinate changes to multiple documents. And I have the limited time to work on those, but I have had some time and made some progress, which we'll dis I'll discuss later. Anyway, uh, I think people should expect in the next month, new drafts of all of the, all the major doc documents. I'm working now, right now on, on security, more specifically draft, NF, uh, draft ITF NFV for security dash, I can't remember the number. And then I'll follow up with another draft of the of the BIS proper. That's soon thereafter. And then an in, in internationalization, which will be discussed later. Uh, I'll, 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 we'll, I think we, I think we'll, there will be a draft to respond to the external reviews, and what pattern that takes we'll discuss later. And I think the, the working group will have to make a decision there. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. So the two major issues top of mind. One is we have a stalled adoption process for the security draft, and we'll have to fix that. Maybe we'll discuss that later when, we, when there's going forward, because that is something we have to go forward on. And we have had a lack of discussion of the existence of the existing drafts, and I need to figure out how to address that issue. Maybe folk try to, uh, maybe we need to schedule interims or just ha have to periodically uh, send mail to the work group, we discussions on these issues, but they're organized pretty well. Some of them are organized pretty well in, in the documents. I think we just have to focus the discussion and proceed with it if in, in many cases. I hope in some cases we'll have, this, we'll have the disagreements, but we just have to have that discussion. Okay. Uh, now I have the summary here. These are the four documents. And there's the BIS proper, uh, which was one of the adopted documents. And I have some slides, about, about three slides about that. Internationalization, which is another the other adopted document. And we've had some very complicated situation with external reviews and a decision to make. Anyway, the five slides on that. And then security. We've been working on, I've been working on a long time and there was an adoption process that started months ago and never really finished. And the, the, the draft that I asked to be adopted has expired and it's now, I've made enough changes that the 06, which was to be adopted is not, is now relevant. I will come out with an 07 and then I'll ask for adoption of that. There's another draft which is RFC 5662 BIS, which the small set of changes, I've never submitted it and never asked, asked to be adopted, but it will be, go along. We don't have it. It probably should be delayed so that uh, it, it's working group last call should be, should be about the same time as 5661 BIS. So we've got a lot of time to do that, but it has to be done. Let's move on to the next slide. All right, so the big change in, in RFC 5661 BIS relevant relative to RFC 881 is that we adapt adapt to a multi-document straight structure. Traditionally, every every minor version was its own 
own big set of drafts to usually two, one for the draft document specification and one for the, uh, uh, the XDR. And now we found a number of areas which are more properly dealt with for the, uh, for the, uh, of the protocol as a whole and not in a version specific manner. And those are, which we've got one we've already addressed, which is RFC 8178 extension issues that, that now is explicitly in RFC 5561 said, hey, this is dealt with in RFC 8178. Internationalization is the same in, in, in every minor version, but Right now, 7530 says one thing for version zero and, and RFC 881 said different, totally different thing, which nobody's ever been implemented. And security, uh, I'll get to that later, but there are a number of reasons that that needs to be addressed in common for all the minor versions. Uh, also, another thing that we've done is there's, we had a ton of errata reports. And I think, uh, I don't know how many, how many dozen, but this is never been a number and include some that were, that were officially rejected, but there was a general sense in the working group that we need to go ahead and make that change anyway. But the working group will have to confirm that once we have text. We do have text now. And the working group will have to make sure that, yes, we do want to do this. We do want to make this change. And right now, we have only five left to address. And I think those will be addressed in probably in the next draft. I hope we address them all in the next draft. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Brian, thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, when when you say some, hi, Dave, thanks for all the work. When you say some were rejected, and but may, the feeling that they have to be addressed is that just clarifying things? Is the no, erotic? some of them are actual actual changes. So they're being unrejected and then addressed within the document. Well, I don't know being. about unrejected. I'm not changing the state of the thing. We're just making the change that people want to make. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks. Tom? Yeah, I, I have a question about your uh, assertion that we need to update the document. Are these fundamental issues that require a, a rewrite? These can't be um, addressed yes. with errata notes? Which no, the, the, they can't be changed and addressed by errata because they say, hey, this is a technical change. We don't do those in errata. That's it, why they're I, rejected. I thought IETF allowed errata updates to RFCs. I mean, but, for something I, small. But I think for... there's, there's, well, there's a feeling that if you allowed that, it's, it's, it's chaos. So the, there's a, a general well, I I admit that it's a long list. It's potentially a long list and chaos is bad. But in the case that it's not chaos and that it's something fairly trivial, uh, you know, waiting for a 800 page document update or even a 200 page document update is kind of a high bar for fixing a bug. Well, since we have to do that update anyway, I'm doing that update anyway. So I will include yeah. those. I, well, I agree that the a new document must contain all the known errata, sure. But there's okay. no way to push out a, yeah, this is wrong, and here's what's right in the meantime, so that we don't... Well, you're right, it seems but like that's a not a process. process problem that I'm not prepared to deal with. Well, yeah, no individual. This would be a working group question. I'm, I'm just kind of putting it out there. It seems awfully heavyweight to, to put an errata... Uh, bar on a new version of a large document. That's all. So, uh, guy there. Uh, yeah. So the, the the in this slide, what I'm I'm really a bit thinking about when I was looking at is some rejected ones addressed. I mean, you rejected some errata and you addressed it, and so I, I don't get that point. So if the errata was not there, it has been rejected for some reason. Um, why we're addressing it. So that's that's one question. The other question is like, well, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I think the whole idea of the beast is that you have so many errors and so many errors are technical errors that it's worth doing the beast thing. But um, 
so the the thing is, is still uh, if you have a version one and version two and version one basically i mean version one and version i have like hundreds of pirata and with version two we are addressing most of them but it doesn't mean like we need to remove all the data from version one so in version one you can still have um, actually uh, accepted errors they are saying like hey um, is this still uh, if you're doing version one you please go ahead and see this errata so that you know what's going on and then your version two you, you basically says obsolete if you don't obsolete version one version two in version two there's like no way of like um, addressing all the errors and say like I'll oh, just implement version two and what I am missing here is basically if we have version two of this whatever protocol we're talking about if the industry is not going to implement version two first why you are doing it second uh, if yeah. version one is still important and we can live with the errata uh, maybe some errata should stay there so it's, it's kind of like, it's not a process question to me. I think uh, both of you are right. I mean, when Dev says like, hey, you, I'm only doing the updates, so why not? Um, but also what Tom said, like if the errors are shortlisted, uh, we can just leave with the errata. That's like, that's not, those are the errors, not like our accepted errors, not for hold for document, uh, document update. If you have hold for document update, that would be, that need to be addressed in the base document. Okay, ready to go on? Next slide. Uh, okay, so I am i haven't actually started work on this, but I know what it will be in the O2. Address the remaining errata reports. There are five of them. And uh, there's a reorganization of attributes, which was suggested by discussion that we had at the, at the last meeting with David Black. And we came to the conclusion that the attributes attributes mode, owner, and owner group should be required, required. And the existing spec said something different, but nobody, nobody's ever implemented or tried to interoperate with a server that doesn't support those attributes. And it's really no point. And really effectively, we might as well, although working group has to confirm this, these are, these are required attributes because without them, you have no security. So that's the connection with the security document, which we'll discuss later. Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, well, this is, we'll discuss internationalization. All right. So as I said before, the treatment in RFC 5661 and 881 do not correspond to implementations. That basically what was in RFC 3530, which never worked, nobody implemented, and a, a lot of people never really read, but they did. They basically implemented something very similar to what was in NFC 3 and what was in RFC 3010, which was obsolete for other reasons. So we need a common approach for all minor versions, since all minor versions the actual implementations take the same approach to uh, internationalization. And that should follow the description in RFC 7530, which, uh, which people actually followed and uh, continued it because no one wants to uh, implement the next version with an entirely different internationalization. So included in the current version, which is, I think these, uh, it's, I think I can't remember the number anyway, there's a basic rewrite to match uh, of the international session to match what's in RFC 7530. And then there was some work to adapt to reach it in it changes because uh, what I had in 7530 and try to bring it forward, it turned out it referred to documents that had been obsolete. So I think I had to add some work to draft that, adapt to that. Anyway, let's move on to the next slide. All right. Now we had a complete set of external reviews and uh, I'll go through these. First, we had an early international review by Nico Williams. And the headline of that was on the right track. But actually, if you read what he wrote, 
he wanted me to write a completely different document. He wanted to write a BCP that applies to multiple protocols, and I wasn't prepared to do that. And a uh, number of people, uh, senior people in the ITF said that, that was crazy, or they didn't use those words, but that was the import of, of, the, of the response. Anyway, he also had helpful suggestions regarding client name caching and the effect that doing representation, normalization related process and case insensitive would have for those. And uh, those are valid. And I tried to incorporate those into a later, into a, some of the subsequent, in, sub, in like 06. Uh, and that made the document bigger and more complicated, but I think it was okay. But then we faced further problems as we moved on to further steps of review. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. First, we had this some a document that looked like a review, but it was but it says it was it was not a review, but it made comments that a review would make. Uh, and John in the, in the process said that he had read the document, but not very closely. So a lot of the things that he was worried about were not relevant to that to that document. Were, they reflected some issues he had with many other things that he's seen in internationalization. Anyway, he did raise some genuine issues regarding the non-opacity of character mapping for lookup, which I have discussed with Tron. I think Tron still might have an issue with what it might be, but I think he and I will have to negotiate. Well, as part of the discussion of, of those changes, they will, the working group will have to decide what we need to do because John did raise a real issue. And uh, so the upshot of, of John's review, non-review, is that he suggested dropping the new material regarding case insensitivity. And that leaves it, this, leaves it with a decision to make. And I'll discuss that in the next slide. We then had... An official, an official review by. Uh, Dave, 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 I'll just, I'll just say something here. I mean, don't put it like like non-review. John did a review, and put it like John did a review, not like art art review, but John did an individual review. I'll not like to quote it as a non-review, because this has well, created a problem between you and John and the John and the whole he, community. Okay, so all right, whatever, that. whatever that that non-review is important. No, no, it's not important. Whatever, whatever. I, I don't, I, this is not about whatever. I mean, this is this is kind of abusive. So this is not whatever. You cannot say that whatever. This is I'm seriously. I think you should go and change this to individual review or review by John Clinton. So don't make it an official statement saying like this is a non-review thing. This has created a whole lot of issues. This has almost given been to an appeal kind of situation and people asking what the hell we are doing in our NFSB four. So this is not acceptable for me. So don't say like whatever here. Please. Okay. I will not say we'll whatever, but I will say that this is a document he wrote explicitly said it was not a review and was not a substitute for a review. Now, it may be that, in fact, it was a review, but let's go. So, but you, you were addressing his comments, right? Well, yes. So I, I think, think my interpretation, what he said, this is a non-review non from the... Because he was not assigned to do the review, but he did it in front of a good faith, like he knows something and he would like to care that we actually uh, care about those comments. So that's like individual review. Well, some and of them all the reviews are valid welcome. and not relevant, but I did try to address all the ones that all of his comments. Yeah, sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a good review by cleansing. Yeah, well, the and one you're one... addressing it, making the document better. You should be, we should be all thankful for John to helping us out here. And okay, I'll okay. The, the last point there, one suggestion that I have thought of was we're doing, but given what we've had from the official review, I think we might not do that. And again, this is a decision that the work group to make, and that we'll move on and we'll discuss in the next slide. Yeah, so, and also, like, you understand, like, this will go to um, working of last call, IT of last call, and then this will just delay if we just move on with like not resolving. So I think we had a very good conversation between you, me and the chairs with the John Clinton. And I was hoping like you were working with John Clinton to like agree with him, like he's fine with the, whatever we are doing here. Well, yes, but uh, there's one point, uh, this one here, 
dropping the new material, I'm not sure we should do that. And I yeah, think, I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing is like, it's not like if somebody comments, we have to follow every comment as she or he would do, but we at least need to be having an agreement on like, and then the working group will decide what is the best way of doing forward. I completely agree with you on that one, right? Sure. But don't treat it as a non-reviewer because this is this is what John Clancyn was like um, complaining about uh, on an attitude of like how we replied to his comments. And if he sees this slide, he'll be reacting furiously. And I'm not in a position to defend any of this. So please don't just change those things as like individual revive. Uh, even if you should well, thank you. I can, but but I've presented this. So I'm not going to rewrite history. I can you give you. I can. But you can you don't need to, version, but I'm you don't not need to rewrite your history. But you don't need to carry on your bad history with you. Okay, fine. Like All you're right, arguing you with me, I'm giving you a suggestion, you. like just to defuse the defuse the situation. But you're agree, uh, arguing with me. I don't like what to do here, actually. So seriously. This is this is like I'm as an AD. I'm not an individual member. I'm an AD. I'm requesting you to don't quote it as a non-review, so that this doesn't create any more problem. Okay? Am I understood? Okay, I can make that change Thank if you'd you. like. Thank you. All right, let's move on. All right, next steps is I'm one to submit 07. Now we'll definitely include. Uh, the suggested Glebranson's su subjection, and I think, and the issues regarding lickup and the, any other issues that I that. But the other one, the one that is in question, is whether we need his depending is is basic suggestion to cut the document back, and I'll discuss that in detail in the next slide. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, there's a pro and a con that will simplify the document and it might simplify the approval process. On the other hand, it leaves the treatment of case and census file systems in an unsatis unsatisfactory state, particularly those that incorporate internationalization. And in, personally, it was probably a bad idea to include them in the first place, but it's too late to remove them now and we would need to follow a document later. So I think the working group, uh, I'll still try to start a discussion uh, next week on this issue. Uh, maybe we need uh, maybe we need to do, do it in an interim. I don't know, because maybe we need an interim anyway, because we had such a, a small, uh, we didn't have any, any, very many people here. So I think we'll probably need to have some set of things discussed in an interim meeting, and this would be one of them. Okay, I said I hear that I should schedule after we got the security draft because I think I also should be scheduled in, in, in Okay, Chris, you have a comment? Great. Yeah, as a semi contributor, I suppose, but not as a chair. Um, so, Dave, can you, uh, admittedly, I have a little inside information here. Dave, can you can kind of expand a little bit on, right? So, between the last slide, right? It, there was a comment of being uh, taking advantage of the fact that I control the slides, um, right? So in here, you know what? It's it's a few slides back, but the okay. There's no there's no uh, notion of of uh, in V three of how you share what the encoding is. Uh, is that correct? In in V three, yes, that's true. Okay, and and so. In V4, um, so there's like this interoperability problem between you know what happens on on clients and how they understand uh, you know kind of their uh, you know whatever their encoding is versus what's actually stored in the server and agreement on that between multiple clients and a server. Like so, the fundamental problem is. Okay, you can't say sort or find uniqueness in a file name uh, because you don't know the encoding, so you don't know, um, um, you know, kind of character set mapping, so that you can do this. But I, as my understanding of the conversation, we don't know how to how to fix all of the stuff that's 
out there today. Um, and is that still necessary in order to make this advancement on internationalization? Well, no, it's not. But let me let me just now most file systems. It doesn't matter what the mapping is. It basically our two names are identical are the same if they're identical. And therefore, it doesn't the, the the file system. Nobody really cares what the mapping is. There are two situations in which it does matter. And one of those is when you do normalization related processes. And one of them is when you do case insensitivity. And the assumption is, has been that if you do either of those things, you have the encoder has to be UTF-8, Unicode, coded as UTF-8. And I think that's the approach I've taken there. Now, the problem is there are variants, particularly even with that assumption, uh, how you deal with, uh, you know, uh, dot and die, capital dot and die in Turkish, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the issue that has to be addressed or not addressed. So uh, John suggested that I not address that, take it all out, but that leaves the question of how you deal with that. And I would really have to deal, deal with it at some point. But the other other issue is uh, the other the other, the other issue is well, if if John is is dead set against this and he has a voice and he will have a voice and I have last call, maybe we just need to defer that. So again, that's that's the that's the overall issue in my, in my view. And and that's the conversation to take to the list. Well, yes, yes. Okay. I'll try to write it out clearly, and I, I'd like, uh, and I, I will do that. Uh, I'll try to do that next week. Thank you. All right. Now, security. Well, um, this should have been different organized, but the, the, the we have an important set of motivations in the next slide, but. In the process of writing the document, I had fur further motivations and work to do. This one is the description of ACLs leaves too much unspecified. And it's not a case of it just doesn't specify. It just say, hey, well, it, it, it could work this way, but you can do anything you want. And there's also a lot of spaces where, is, where they use what they call, what's called uh, intentional shoulds which really amounts to may, even though it's not doesn't fact the yeah, it's not the de official definition of should, and therefore it's impossible to interrupt makes it very difficult from an interoperable point of view. Anyway, that's the other thing, and the document stat is is we we need to I think we need to adopt it, but we started it a long time ago. It never finished. finished. And the document, the 06 of which it was done on, has expired, and now there will be no seven, and I will start again. And we need to rectify that problem and have something that happens in a reasonable time. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, this is why we started this. There's no threat analyses in any of the in the in the end of the NFSC for specialists for any minor version. Uh, the description of authors in both of the, in the RFCs 7530 and 5661 and 881 uh, says that authors is an optional means of authentication. Well, first of all, optional suggests that clients are free to use without negative consequences, whatever they choose to do. But actually, I don't know whether the should is the right word, but or recommend is the right word. But clearly, there are negative consequences to using uh, auth sys, and the document is, has to say those, explain those. And actually, this says it means of authentication, but it doesn't do authentication. It does not discuss the security consequences, but the fact that everyone did it was considering, considered enough, but that's not appropriate now. Uh, 
And there's also a need to include the connection or, or in security features like uh, RPC TLS, rather than relying only on encryption, on encryption provided by the various auth flavors. So those were the motivations. And I think we need a document to do those. And I think we need to adopt that document, whatever there may be a lot of diff, uh, uh, difference of opinion about the details, but we can resolve those. But we need to do those within the frame of a, of a working group document. And that's why I need to follow up as soon as I can. And we need to move on to adopt the document. Let's go move on. Next slide. So uh, uh, there is a draft 06 that is submitted, but it's not, not, not adopted. And I thought it had expired, but it actually hasn't. But in any case, I will be working on an 07 with a few of the issues to discuss later. Uh, and I will we'll request adoption on that. And I hope we can proceed with it, have uh, planned for doing, proceeding with that in a reasonable time, like within a month. Uh, uh, the, the changes in 07 rather than 06 is I reorganized the tree of security related attributes. In the in 06, they're scattered all over the docket. Now I have a separate section uh, dealing with all the uh, attributes. And I think that worked, worked out better. And uh, there's changes to attribute classifications, which are in the next slide, which was which was the result of some discussion we had at uh, IATF 117. I think I, I discussed that with David Black, and we came, I came to the conclusion that that changed me. To, I was figuring out. I knew that mode, owner, and owner group had to be treated different. And as a result of the discussion, we decided that it's best to make those required, even though that's a big change. Okay, let's move on. Okay. I think mode, owner, and owner group, or group, group owner is the name. Okay. I think are going to be required rather than recommended. And the fact is that even though we recommended, it was in the document that really me meant the intention was optional. And uh, that's going to be addressed in this, in RFC C56 BIS and in security. Most of the work is going to be in the security 07. And I also need to decide that given that certain attributes are so underspecified that, that we can't really, you can't figure out how to make an, uh, uh, implementations. Uh, uh, certain attributes are experimental and they, they made a discussion of why that's a, but those need to be called out. Anyway, uh, those are going to be discussed as consensus item number 58 in appendix B of the security document as a long list of issues that need to be resolved and we need to focus on those later. Okay, next slide. I need to get 07 out and that will be within the month. It's going to be the last, uh, it's going to be one of these documents, but, uh, oh, actually that's the, that's the next step. So that should be within a, a week or so. Uh, and we need to restart the adoption process as soon as we can. And, uh, we need to discuss the issues in a way that we haven't been discussing, uh, the pending issues for all these documents. Okay. Let's move on. Now, there's an appendix, all the issues, for all the issues where I think we have to make a change, something that was un, really unclear, not just beyond, beyond textual changes. Uh, I have annotations. These are tied to specific discussions that, where we need consensus. And in appendix A, they're all summarized, and we can organize the, the discussion around the sets of those. And I think probably what most of those will happen on, will happen on the uh, on the uh, on the list, but we'll also have the opportunity. Might have need to have the opportunity to have some interims for some of those, which might be contentious. But as we as we move to consensus on each of those consensus items, I'll update the documents to remove the vestigial text, which is now marked vestigial, replace the new text, get rid of the author size and write 
as if it, you know, resided as as in, as the, the, the work, something the working group has decide, decided. Okay, let's move on. I think that's the end of the. Okay, last document is one we haven't talked about, but I should. It's my my fault. I haven't submitted. It. But anyway, it turns out in addition to fifty six sixty one bis, there needs to be a fifty six sixty two bis. There were a small set of changes. I have neglected to submit that, and I'll fix that in the next few. In fact, when can I submit? I think I can submit documents now. Uh, yeah, I, you can. You can submit again. Okay, fine. So I will do that within this week. All right, and uh, let's move on to the next slide, and that is the end. All right, next slide. All right. Uh, once I submit it, we'll be able to discuss on the mail. I don't require, I don't think it requires extensive discussions and I expect adoption. And it, it probably is closer to working group last call than any, any of the other documents, but uh, there's no real point in, 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 in doing that separately from 51, 51 bis. All right, that's it. Any questions overall, or are, are, am I done? I'm not seeing anyone in queue. Looks good to me. OK. Well, thanks, everybody. So so uh, D David, just hold on a bit. I was trying to get on the queue, but it seems like it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> so Jahid here again. Uh, um, so I, I think, uh, first of all, big thanks from me to you to do all these things. Uh, this is really great. I mean, uh, you have been working uh, almost solely in a number of things. So big thanks for that one, doing this. Um, but I, I, have, I have been thinking, like, I mean, there are too many things happening at the same time here. Uh, like, as you see, like, you have been presenting all these things. So I was thinking, like, do you have a preference, like, which one we should go target and finish first um, of all those things that you're doing. Like you said, the security is almost done, but there are like bees work going on and other work going on, do, do internal internationalization. So do you have like a preference of like, which one we should target and try to finish it and then take go for the next one? Well, that would be internationalization, but also we need to keep, we need to make, start to make progress on security and get it adopted. So, so I am. Uh, so I'm getting it like first we will target the internationalization. So you're gonna start some mainly this discussion, um, and then yes. we try to that, that, that uh, we have to make that, that decision about. Yeah, exactly. And then we go for the security, and then the these things that's happening. I mean, that's right. That, like, I think if we do this kind of sequential of ways of thinking, it actually helps us getting through, rather than stack doing things all things parallel. Uh, because of very often we have problem getting the reviews done, right? So, uh, yeah, that was just the only thing I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we had a good portion of this um, already happening. So, you know, we still have these updates. I, I said, you know, uh, and I thank you for the feedback in particular, Tom. Um, we, the chairs, this is a chair failing for sure, didn't get interims worked out in between 17 and 18. Is that is that going to be a game changer for the working group? What what does the group want the chairs to do to to make this effective as kind of the the closing statement as we walk out of uh, 118 uh, uh, without raising my hand i have a comment two comments um i <clears throat> i do think the interim um just a every two week cadence of an interim touch base meeting would help us on the adoption pace uh, on the documents that Dave is currently pushing through. 
I, 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 I think we need to try that and do it because the mailing list waiting for people to push is not um, comments is not helping us. And so we, I think we need to do a poll function right now. And I'd, and I would rather that be a discussion than mailing list latency, give it a try. Can we just, I just would like to see that happen. That's all. Um, the other thing I heard at the beginning, I think, from Sahed was uh, uh, regular touch base on the mailing list, uh, giving quickie status or, you know, this is where we are, maybe on even a weekly occurrence from the chairs just to shake the tree on a regular basis. Um, that's a lightweight action that I think Sahed requested that might help keep people uh on track for the reviews we are needing from them um, over the next couple of three months. Okay. That makes sense. Sounds good to me. I want the interims. <laughs> I want the interims and weekly touch base on the mail list. It makes sense. Um, Bi-weekly might be a little bit often, but why not try it? See if it gets enough participation. Yeah, I was, by the way, we, 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 we never implemented the interim meetings, but we talked about it a fair bit. I was, I was looking for biweekly hour meetings, I think was where we finally landed instead of longer meetings that people would have a hard time finding. Yeah, I guess. Based for on the calendar and not every week that would be a little bit burdensome. I thought we, I thought we had settled on every two weeks and okay. uh, keep it to an hour. And it's not mandatory attendance, but it's uh, yeah. So it might be a little ambitious with the holidays coming up, but uh, you know, long term, it might work. Okay. Right, two weeks from now is a U.S. holiday, and four weeks after that is another one. So. You get holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is Monday on IETF week instead of Friday on IETF week, I will schedule them before I leave Prague. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah, if if we can get a if we can get an ICS that lands in our calendar, that'll probably uh, ensure better attendance. I, I heard the the feedback from one seventeen of use Zoom, which I work at. Uh, Carnegie Mellon University. I will use Carnegie Mellon University's very large Zoom account. Uh, so uh, not that I can't accommodate all two physical people in the room on our Zoom account, but I can accommodate very many people. So it will not be an issue that in any way excludes anyone. You want me to echo? Okay. <laughs> I was say, but my AD is already giving me a little side eye so, on the Zoom so, comment. So yeah, I mean the thing is like uh, two things. One, these need to be uh, on the data tracker. Uh, so they basically, uh, um, there you you can choose your whatever tool you like, but you have Mitico, you have Webex uh, for the NFS report. So pick one. Uh, and I don't have a, like another info. I'm not going to say like, okay, you must do this and use this tool. The users, like whatever your, you, you are empowered to make those decisions. So do that. But only thing that is, is required here, like well announced and in the data tracker. So other people actually see like this is happening. Yes. Absolutely. I will not make the mistake I made last time. <laughs> no, that, that was not, that's learning. That's, that's yeah, not that mistake. is learning. That's I, that's I, well, learning. <laughs> All right. Any other comments before we? Sorry. Oh, yep. Sorry, yep. Soren. Yeah. Thank you. Soren, you have you have a comment? Oh man. I was just going to say the, the only surprising thing about today's meeting was that Meet Echo was working. Soren, if you're talking, well, it was surprising. That's right. Yeah, Soren, and it was talking, good. We can't hear you. That's no bueno. He's okay. Anyway, Soren, you want to chat us the question?
Can you hear us, Saul? It's unmuted. Yeah. We can hear you, Soren. We can see you. Hold on. Yeah, you're still muted, Soren. I can see your mute status. I can't change it. I really feel like if I could only. Uh... Yes, yeah, Soren, you're showing as muted. And we don't have control over that, seemingly. All right, he's back. You can unmute Soren. We'll 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 listen. His little thing is showing. Soren, can you do everyone a favor and type your question into the chat? You may have just basically. I called down the wrath of the gods when I said. Me that you said it was working good. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's all your fault. Uh, it is, actually. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. Oh. I mean, we had this problem. You said it too, time. so you can share the blame. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you chat to us? We can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I might be messing with. Okay, Soren, try it one more time. So I see some kind of green mic that I can revoke your audio, but we don't actually have audio coming from you. So you're, as far as Meet Echo goes right now, you're unmuted, um, but we still we're still not getting audio from you. Can you chat? Can you chat your question to us, Soren? Because Meet Echo sucks. I'll put that in a minute. No. Wow. <laughs> Brian, you obviously shouldn't have said anything about <laughs> Meet Echo. I apologize. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've done it now. No, because every other every time we've used the Meet Echo, we've had one or two people with audio problems, and once yeah. I think the last time was me. So, and, and it worked it, really well for an hour and a half here. Oh well. Yeah. So, so Brian and uh, everybody else, I mean, this yeah. is a right thing to do. Put in your comments uh, and the feedback to Meet Echo. Um, yeah, definitely, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they will, they will take your comments seriously. So, yeah. I think I, okay. Well, well Soren, we're going to follow up after this meeting. I'm uh, sorry, Chris. I, I don't think we want to do this. Never. Okay. Soren, we'll follow up on the mail list afterwards. Put perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Soren. All right. Thanks everybody. You get. 40 minutes back, I think. I Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks for being out there and sharing. Thanks ahead. You're, uh, you're always there. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>
All right. Take care. Sign the blue sheets if you haven't. <laughs> okay, fine. And we're out. Just so, so please update that one individually with